Good day and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Hingston Compton, and with me today is Miss Jacqueline Matthew Favory, a health planner in the Corporate Planning Unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs. And she's here to talk to us about a relatively new initiative called the OECS Regional Health Project. Welcome, this is Matthew Favory to the program. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Compton. Uh, so before we get um, started on the, the meat of, the, of what we're here to talk about, can you tell us a little bit about your role as a, as a health planner? What exactly is that? Okay, within the corporate planning unit of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, um, particularly with this project, my role is uh, that of the focal point the liaison between the project implementation unit of the World Bank and mm. the Ministry of Health. Of course, yes, because the, the project is actually a collaborative effort of the Ministry of Health and yes. the World Bank. Yes, it is. So let us know what exactly is the OECS Regional Health Project and what is its purpose? Okay, so the OECS Regional Health Project is a subcomponent of a broader health system strengthening project of the World Bank. It's a broader World Bank project um, and it is, uh, uh, it, it comprises three components. Um, one is to improve lab, the lab capacity, mm -hmm. um, and also um, in the area of the improving the facilities. Mm -hmm. um, the other component is on public health emergencies. Mm -hmm. uh, it has another to improve capacity um, and build capacity, sorry, within the, 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 the Ministry of Health. Um, there is also another component um, under the project, which we call the SUC, and it is a component that in the event of any health emergency, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be health or natural disaster, we can trigger that SUC and we can get funds disbursed to assist um, St. Lucia in the response to that emergency. Okay, well, we'll get to a little bit more about what you've just discussed there, but can you also tell us a little bit about a brief history of the project, um, why, it, why you saw fit for it to be, to be launched? Um, it's called, I know it's called the OECS Regional Health Project, but it doesn't actually fall under the OECS Commission, does it? So why, why is it called that and what islands were chosen? Okay, so the OECS Commission is separate and apart from the OECS Regional Health Project. Mm -hmm. um, the OECS Regional Health Project comprises, it is implemented, sorry, across the OECS countries, Grenada, Dominica, St. Vincent, and St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. um, we share similar project activities, and most of it is to um, improve our health and public health response in the countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is, can you tell us anything about uh, maybe a few differences between our components of the project as well as theirs? Or, or how are we, how are we, what are we focusing on in St. Lucia? Because I know each, each island is handling it their own way or approaching it a different way. Okay, so I'll just go through the components and it will give us an idea of what is happening. So in the first component, we would see um, the improvement in our laboratory capacity, mm -hmm. and we will also see um, an improvement in our um, health infrastructure. The, we will have uh, facilities um, remodeled and retrofitted in some instances, and also the capacity of the, the labs to respond to natural um, and health emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, you would have, we would have experienced, we did experience COVID mm -hmm. in 2000, from 2000 and... 2020. Yes, mm -hmm. sorry, 2020. Mm -hmm. And going back, we, we experienced chikungunya and mm -hmm. Zika. So with the improvements in the lab and the lab capacity, it would assist us in addressing and dealing with these, um, these diseases uh, more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for the improvements to the the the, um, the infrastructure, mm -hmm. we started an initiative with PAHO a few years ago to smart some of our wellness centers. 
Um, not all of the wellness centers were completed under that project, so we will continue under the World Bank Regional Health Project. Mm. Um, and we will see the smarting of some 14 health facilities. When we say smart, the facilities are more resilient to hurricanes and natural disasters. They are efficient in terms of what the, the energy that is consumed within the facilities. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it also gives um, room for improvement um, in the general service provision and delivery. In the other component, component two, um, which more or less addresses um, surveillance and emergency management, we have here um, uh, the mm. I can continue. So we have here, sorry, mm. we will see here in this component um, improvement in areas, for example, food safety and food safety handling. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, a, a unit in the Department of Environmental Health. Also, um, that of the vector control unit. So it will provide some assistance and improve the general service provision that is done by that unit in terms of their response to um, health emergencies. Another part of that component would be that of the emergency management. Um, we know when we have natural disasters in St. Lucia, we are easily cut off from the north and the south of the island. Mm. So what we, this project is allowing us to do is to establish two health emergency operation centers, one in the north and one in the south, which can coordinate activities um, on the health level in the event of any um, natural disaster. Okay, we're actually due for our first break. So I'm gonna come back to a lot of what you said, like I, I want to hear a little bit more about the, the food security and what exactly goes into smarting of the, um, into the health facilities. So just stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Issues and Answers. We'll be back right after this. We are working parents. And we breastfed both babies exclusively. Mother's breast milk is naturally the best milk for baby. Love yourself and love your baby. Breastfeeding saves me money and it's free. Every moment I breastfeed strengthens the bond between me and my baby. I breastfed twin boys and lost all my baby fat. We were breastfed! And we have breast milk power. I am Pastor Alvin and I support breastfeeding. For more information, call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5359. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I am your host, Jacques Kingston Compton. I'm here with health planner in the corporate planning unit, Mrs. Jacqueline Matthew Favre, and we're talking about the OECS Regional Health Project. Now, before we went on break, you were speaking about the different components of the project, and we want, we, I specifically want to know a little bit more about component two which is the strengthening of public health surveillance. Okay, um, so the project will support um, some areas of public health surveillance, mm -hmm. particularly in the areas of, um, in, the in the division of environmental health. So we will support the vector control unit, food safety equipment, mm -hmm. and also um, to provide some assistance in sourcing equipment for them to, to better provide the care and services um, in, in the task they are assigned. For example, um, we, have, we will be sourcing some vehicles to assist them in um, addressing their vector control issues. Mm -hmm. um, and we know it is, um, it is one that we have been battling with some time. So this is one of the areas they'll be getting support in. Also with the food safety equipment, um, it will assist us in, in, in um, 
testing food samples mm -hmm. and what have you. Uh, can you go into dive a little bit into what some of the issues are with vector control? You mentioned um, the vehicles. Could you discuss a little bit about that? Okay. With vector control, um, in the past, as I mentioned earlier, we had faced um, an outbreak of chikungunya and Zika. With the, with, the, with the vehicles, it will give the units a, a better, um, it will allow them to respond better mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. these outbreaks. Mm -hmm. So they can go down to the, the, the areas, the hotspots, if, mm -hmm. if I may, and uh, better tackle these issues. So it would give them an opportunity to, be, to have a more hands-on approach where they'd actually be there and to engage and to deal with the matters. Okay. Now, uh, you also mentioned smarting um, before we came to the break. What exactly is involved in smarting? You, I know you did mention that you would make the, um, the facilities more energy efficient. What exactly would go into um, doing things like that under the project? Okay, so um, when the facility is retrofitted to make it smart, um, you would see, so the aim is to change the... Um, the usage. Mm -hmm. So in terms of electricity, we hope the bill to be reduced with water also. So for example, with the water, the faucets that's being used, it would be converted or changed into one that would conserve the water more. So you would have less, a, less, a reduced amount of water coming out of the tap mm -hmm. to encourage you to use less to do whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. And these would um, would be placed throughout the facility. For example, even with the toilets. Mm -hmm. So you would, you would have in there toilets that um, consume less water to enable it to flush. With the, with the bulbs and the electricity, mm -hmm. we would move to more energy efficient bulbs and lighting. Mm -hmm. So at the end, our energy consumption bills for electricity and water mm -hmm. would be significantly reduced. Oh, well, that's excellent. Um, do you have uh, sort of a general timeline as to when it might happen? When, at least when we, um, you know, the project is a couple years old at this point. Mm -hmm. But do you have any idea of when we might see uh, some of these improvements? Okay. Um, you would have seen some of these improvements have happened. They, they've already um, started taking place uh, with the, as I indicated earlier, PAHO did some mm -hmm. retrofitting prior mm -hmm. to this project. Um, but the coming out of this one, mm -hmm. we hope to see some of these projects get on the way at least by the end of the year. Okay. And with regards to right now, COVID is a hot topic. And we have mentioned some of the disease outbreaks we've had before, like chikungunya. Is there anything that we have learned from COVID that the, the project mm -hmm. will address? Anything, anything other than the need for being able to smart or... The, or or improve the vehicles, as you mentioned earlier? Um, yes, we have. Actually, um, we saw the need to improve uh, our specimen transportation. Mm -hmm. And this project will address us, address this, this issue, and it will help us. Um, it will, we will, they will provide us with uh, transportation. Mm -hmm. So when the specimen is taken from the client, it will be transported to the main lab, the National Reference Laboratory, mm -hmm. in ample time. Okay. In good time to have it tested and results produced. Okay, that's brilliant. Are there any other sort of improvements we can, we can look forward to? In this project? Mm -hmm. In around this area? Yes. Um, that one was the biggest issue, the, mm -hmm. the, the biggest ticket item. Um, of course, we will see improvements in the laboratory systems as well mm -hmm. um, because we will improve the, the lab and the lab's ability to test. So you will see improvement in tests, mm -hmm. more tests being available mm -hmm. that is generally required at that level. And on the, let's say on the users of primary healthcare level, I'm a patient, I'm walking into any of these health, it, newly improved health facilities, how does it affect me? As a, as a patient coming in. Okay, so um, it can and it will affect you. 
for example, uh, before probably you would need to, when you approach the facility, you'd need to get a test done and you would be referred to a private lab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with the improvement in the laboratory infrastructure, some of these tests will be made available within the primary health care setting. So you would not necessarily have to be referred to get that test done. It could be done right there at the facility. Not all, mm -hmm. but, but some. But, uh, okay. So Whatever it, it, that has been um, highlighted or deemed to be for the level required at that level of care. So it even reduces the time that I would spend in a, in a health facility? or. Um, not necessarily. not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, we're actually due for our final break. So when we come back, we'll discuss a lot more about the, the, the project and what's, what to expect in the future. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. What's in the food you're okay. eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that oh, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rice St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food Awesome. Welcome back to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Kingston Compton, and we are with the health planner at the Corporate Planning Unit, Mrs. Jacqueline Matthew Favre, and we're talking about a project that she is the focal point for, which is called the OECS Regional Health Project. Uh, so, I want to speak about something that is obviously going to be important to a lot of people. And I, I know that under this project, those things will improve. So can you tell us a little bit about how the project will improve accessibility to healthcare for people with disabilities? Okay. Um, under the project, the component that addresses the, the retrofitting of the facilities mm -hmm. um, will now encompass all of these areas just in case it was not there. And in most of our health facilities, we do have access. There is access for people with disabilities. Um, so if the facility is down for retrofitting, mm -hmm. these um, access areas would, would be improved. So probably it would have been expanded to accommodate a larger wheelchair mm -hmm. or somebody with um, um, the walking assistance no, mm -hmm. to to access the facility so um we will improve it and we will all always consider the access and care for persons with disabilities because it's a health facility as well mm -hmm. we have to make it that any and everybody can access it now with all the issues being addressed under the project is it some, how did you go about determining what needed to be fixed? Did you meet with all, uh, various stakeholders? You met with the patients, you spoke with doctors. How did, how did the solutions to all of these problems come about? Okay, in, in order to retrofit them? Any, anything under the project, okay. but retro, retrofitting as well. Okay, um, so before the retrofitting activity happens, mm -hmm. there was an assessment that was conducted at all of our wellness centers mm -hmm. um, to determine how we move forward to improve the care and the care services that we provide to the general mm -hmm. public. So that assessment will now inform the retrofitting works that will be done at the facilities. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the level of care, and when I say the level, it depends on the service provision and the type of services that we are able to provide at that facility that we will see improvements. Okay. Now we're also we're coming 
very close to the end of the program. Is there anything else that you would like to add before we mm -hmm. um, shuffle off? <laughs> okay. Um, basically, the health, uh, the OECS Regional Health Project, it is a new initiative. Mm -hmm. um, one that we have not quite engaged, we have, uh, we have not been engaged with in, in delivering um, mm -hmm. from the ministry's end. And um, we're very excited about it for the very reason um, um, that it will improve the service delivery and care for, for, for the general population. Mm -hmm. um, and we look forward to the completion of it in, in due time and to meet all of its targets. And, and of course, meeting the needs of our population. Okay, that's brilliant. So this, I, I assume this is one of your first and hopefully not your last media appearance where you will have to discuss with the public uh, what exactly the project is. Yes, as a matter of fact, um, I hope you invite me sometime later and mm -hmm. I can tell you of the improvements and, and the, the, um, the strides we've made mm -hmm and how, we've, how far we've gotten mm -hmm. with the project. Of course, I will definitely be calling you back so you can speak about any developments as it is a matter of national importance because it is improving it's the important. healthcare of the entire country. Yes. So uh, Mrs. Matthew Favre, I want to thank you very much for coming on yes. our program. We did enjoy having you here. Yes. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Please stay tuned to more content from the Government Information Service and thank you for watching.